All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I am Sarabjit Kaur and with me is Saira Mujtaba. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address 18th convocation of Tejpur University in Assam this morning. Prime Minister to also interact with beneficiaries of COVID-19 vaccination drive in Varanasi. India crosses a significant milestone of vaccinating over 1 million health care workers. Myanmar, Mauritius and Seychelles to receive India-made Covishield vaccine. And next round of talks between centre and farmer unions to be held today in New Delhi. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin the bulletin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. Now the news. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address the 18th convocation of Tejpur University Assam at 10.30 a.m. today through video conferencing. Assam Governor Professor Jagdish Mukhi, Chief Minister Sarbanan Sonowal and Union Education Minister Dr. Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank will also be present on the occasion. The event will witness the conferring of degrees and diplomas upon students who passed out in 2020. More details from our Guwahati correspondent. The Tejpur University was established by an Act of Parliament in the year 1994. The establishment of the Tejpur University was one of the outcomes of the Assam Accord. Today's convocation will witness the conferring of degrees and diplomas upon 1,218 students who passed out in 2020. Among the degree recipients, 48 toppers of various undergraduate and postgraduate programs will be awarded gold medals. The convocation will be held in blended mode observing the COVID-19 protocols. Only the PhD scholars and gold medalists will receive their degrees and gold medals in person and the rest of the recipients will be awarded degrees and diplomas virtually. Manas Patim Sharma, AR News, Guwahati. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will interact with beneficiaries and vaccinators of the COVID vaccination drive in Varanasi today through video conferencing. The participants will share their first-hand experience with the Prime Minister. The interaction follows a continuous dialogue and discussion by the Prime Minister with scientists, political leaders, officials and other stakeholders to proactively ensure the smooth conduct of the world's largest vaccination drive. India has crossed a significant milestone of vaccinating more than 1 million healthcare workers with over 2,33,000 getting their first dose yesterday itself. In a tweet, the health ministry said 10,40,014 healthcare workers have been vaccinated so far in the country. On the 16th of this month, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had launched the world's largest COVID vaccination drive. The number of vaccinations reported yesterday is the highest in a single day. Data compiled by Oxford University shows that India is now the fastest country to breach the million mark, taking only six days compared to nine by the United States. Officials have credited the improvement in pace to changes in the COVID application that now allows vaccinators to administer shots to walk-in healthcare workers if those scheduled do not turn up. The app has been modified to allow creation of more session sites, more sessions per site and change in site location as per the local requirement. Additional Secretary in the Health Ministry, Manohar Agnani said, instead of a daily plan, officials concerned can now plan and schedule the sessions for the entire week. Health and Family Welfare Minister Dr. Harshwardhan has said, COVID-19 vaccines are completely safe and effective and these vaccines will prove to be the last nail in the coffin of COVID-19 disease. While releasing the communication creative prepared by the Health and Family Welfare Ministry to address issues related to vaccine hesitancy, Dr. Harshwardhan said, adverse events or side effects are common and they surface after any vaccination. He stressed that two indigenous vaccines have been authorized after sufficient scientific scrutiny, human trials and after identifying their efficacy. 
He said several countries are approaching India to export these vaccines to their country. Urging the need to counter the misinformation about the COVID-19 vaccines, the minister said vaccines have played a critical role in the past in controlling various diseases like chickenpox and polio. He said it is unfortunate that some people are spreading misinformation about the vaccines which has developed vaccine hesitancy in a few people. समाज में जो लोग वैक्सीन के खिलाफ भ्रांतियां गलत जानकारियां और गलत फहमियां फैला रहे हैं उनकी जानकारियों को हर तरीके से इग्नोर करके हमको सबको मिलकर वैक्सीन को अपनी और समाज की कोविड के खिलाफ बेहतर सुरक्षा के लिए इस्तेमाल करना जरूरी है बड़े बड़े देश के डॉक्टरों ने वैक्सीन ली और उसके तुरंत बाद जाकर अपना काम करना शुरू कर दिया बिना किसी साइड इफेक्ट के ये अपने आप में इस बात को प्रमाणित और पुष्टि करता है कि ये वैक्सीन पूरी तरह से सेफ और इफेक्टिव है In Uttar Pradesh COVID vaccination is being carried out as per the guidelines of the center remaining healthcare workers will be vaccinated today government has fixed two days thursday and friday for vaccination in the state preparations for administering the second dose of vaccine to the healthcare workers on 15th of february is in full swing more details from our lucknow correspondent 1500 booths have been prepared for vaccination to the left out health workers in state today according to health department more than 10 lakh 50000 vaccine doses are available by base health personnel will be vaccinated official spokesperson told that union government is going to provide additional supply of 18 lakh more vaccines to state within next three days meanwhile the infection rate of covid-19 is sharply declining in state during the last 24 hours only 195 new corona cases were found and 345 corona infected people got recovered as of now more than 581509 people have got cured and discharged the number of active cases of corona has reduced to 7717 in state ms yadav air news lucknow in bihar 63032 healthcare workers have been vaccinated for covid-19 Health Minister Mangal Pandey said to further enhance the turnout changes in the covid software have been made to allow the health department to take new beneficiaries against the absentees the state government has started registering frontline workers on covid digital portal for the second phase of the vaccination drive in madhya pradesh over 38600 people were vaccinated so far more details from our bhopal correspondent Covid vaccination is being done smoothly in the state around 10500 people were vaccinated on Thursday at 140 centers across the state state health department officials have informed that adequate doses of covid vaccine is available in vaccination centers earlier state received 5 lakh 6000 doses now in addition to this 4 lakh 31000 more doses have been received in the state meanwhile the covid positivity rate is consistently declining in the state yesterday it was 1.2% percent 300 and one new positive cases were reported on Thursday while 704 patients recovered from covid infection Pooja P Vardhan AIR News Bhopal In Gujarat the fresh cases of covid-19 are constantly declining the recovery rate has further improved to 96.17% our Ahmedabad correspondent reports that the vaccination drive is running smoothly in the state In Gujarat 12487 persons have been given covid-19 vaccine yesterday with this the total persons received the covid-19 vaccine have reached up to 35951 till now meanwhile Gujarat has recorded 471 new cases of covid-19 infection the total number of covid-19 cases detected so far in Gujarat has reached up to 257513 out of this 247950 persons recovered 700 127 persons discharged from the hospitals after recovery during the last 24 hours maximum 95 new cases reported from Ahmedabad while Surat recorded 91 new cases at present total active cases in the state are 5491 out of which 52 persons are on ventilator yogesh pandya air news ahmedabad in karnataka 17190 healthcare workers were vaccinated in 352 sessions held on the 6th day yesterday it is 52% of the targeted beneficiaries of 32773 more details from our bengaluru correspondent 
in Karnataka, 1,34,597 healthcare workers are vaccinated in 2,844 sessions held till date against the targeted beneficiaries of 2,36,812. This is 57% of the total coverage. Bengaluru Urban recorded the highest number of vaccination with 5,656 beneficiaries, followed by Balagavi with 2,901 and Dachana with 1,505. Meanwhile, the state reported 674 new COVID-19 positive cases, 815 recoveries and two deaths during the last 24 hours. The state positivity rate is 0.75%, recovery rate is 97.8% and the fatality rate is 0. 0.29% or Murthy AR News, Bengaluru. In Tamil Nadu, 7,762 healthcare workers were vaccinated on Wednesday. With this, the state has vaccinated 40% of the 85,000 beneficiaries in the past five days. Our correspondent has filed this report. Southern Railway has also launched a COVID-19 vaccine campaign and will administer the vaccine to around 1,240 frontline workers at the Perambur Railway Hospital, ICF Hospital and the Chennai Division Hospital. Dr. C. V. N. Murthy, Medical Director of the Perambur Railway Hospital, was the first to receive the dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. The hospital has the facility of walk-in cooler which will help in storing the vaccine in the recommended temperature range of 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. Joy, yeah, yeah, new Chennai. The COVID-19 vaccination drive started in North and Middle Andaman District yesterday. The drive commenced at three block centers at Mayabandar, Rangat and Diglipur. On the first day, a total of 202 healthcare workers were vaccinated in the district. This will continue to go on to complete Phase 1. The vaccination drive is running smoothly at two centers in South Andaman District, the drive is going to begin in Nicobar district tomorrow. Till now, 12,500 doses of COVID shield vaccine were received by the administration. A total of 1,033 healthcare workers have been vaccinated till now in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Additionally, 91 defense healthcare workers also got the vaccine. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address 18th Convocation of Tezpur University in Assam this morning. Prime Minister to also interact with beneficiaries of COVID-19 vaccination drive in Varanasi. India crosses a significant milestone of vaccinating over 1 million healthcare workers. Myanmar, Mauritius and Seychelles to receive India-made COVID shield vaccine. And next round of talks between centre and farmer unions to be held today in New Delhi. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Myanmar, Mauritius and Seychelles will receive India-made Covishield vaccine today, a consignment containing 1.5 million doses of Covishield vaccines from India will reach Myanmar today. Sources said Myanmar is one of the first countries to receive Indian government's gift of the Make in India Covishield vaccines manufactured by the Serum Institute of India. Myanmar is an important land and maritime neighbor of India with which India shares close historical, civilizational, cultural, religious, linguistic and ethnic ties. Myanmar is a vital component of India's neighborhood first and act east policies. A consignment of 50,000 doses of Covishield vaccine is scheduled to reach Seychelles today as part of India's vaccine donation program. Sources said Seychelles is only among the four Indian Ocean countries to receive Covishield vaccine manufactured by the Serum Institute of India as New Delhi's grant assistance. The donation of the vaccines under the Vaccine Maitri demonstrates India's role as a reliable partner of Seychelles and net security provider in the Indian Ocean region. This is also reflective of India's special relations with Seychelles and the central place enjoyed by Seychelles in Prime Minister Modi's vision of Sagar, security and growth for all in the region. Meanwhile, Covid shield consignment of 1 lakh doses is slated to arrive in Mauritius today. Mauritius has a population of less than 1.3 million inhabitants. The country is highly de dependent on external trade and tourism and hospitality industry, which has been severely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. The request for supply of Indian vaccines has been made from the highest level in the Mauritius government. The donation of 1 lakh doses of Covishield vaccines to Mauritius will cover vaccination requirement of a considerable percentage of its frontline medical workers. 
and will play a vital role in complementing its ongoing recovery plans from the effects of the pandemic. India also sent 1 million doses of the COVID vaccine to Nepal as a gift under vaccine vaccine maitri initiative. Nepal Health Minister Hrideyesh Tripathi said the vaccine gifted by India will be given to health care workers and other frontline personnel within a week to 10 days. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that India remains committed to assisting the people of Nepal in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. He was replying to Nepal Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli on Twitter who thanked Mr Modi and the people of India for 1 million doses of the vaccine. Mr Modi said the vaccines being made in India will also contribute to the global efforts to contain the pandemic. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has thanked Prime Minister Narendra Modi for the gift of 2 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine to Bangladesh. Addressing a conference, Prime Minister Hasina expressed hope that the vaccines purchased from India will also arrive by January 25-26. Referring to the measures taken by the government in purchasing the COVID-19 vaccine, Prime Minister Hasina said that the government is taking all the required measures to fight the coronavirus. Earlier, High Commissioner of India to Bangladesh Vikram Durai Sami handed over 2 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine gift to Bangladesh Foreign Minister Dr. A K Abdul Momin and Health Minister Zahid Malik at a function held in Dhaka yesterday. Training in administering COVID vaccine was provided to Bangladesh, Bhutan, Maldives, Mongolia, Myanmar, Nepal, Bahrain, Brazil, Mauritius, Morocco, Oman, Seychelles and Sri Lanka by Indian Health Ministry on the 19th and 20th of this month. Sources said national and provincial level government officials, cold chain officials and partners from WHO and UNICEF participated. The duration of training was for 5 hours and 30 minutes. The key topics covered were COVID-19 disease and vaccines, setting up sites and conducting COVID vaccination, safe injection practices and waste management, training of health staff, monitoring and supervision were some of the topics covered. The country's COVID-19 recovery rate has reached 96.75%. More than 19,000 COVID patients recovered during the last 24 hours. According to the Health Ministry, the total number of recoveries has gone up to over 1 crore 2 lakh 65,000. The actual case load currently comprises only 1.81% of the total positive cases. Presently, the total number of active cases in the country is 1,92,000. During the past 24 hours, 15,223 new cases were reported, taking the total number of positive cases to over 1 crore 6 lakh. In Jharkhand, the recovery rate among infected people from COVID-19 has reached 98.22%. 1,15,989 people have recovered so far and have been discharged from hospitals. Presently, 1,032 patients with active COVID-19 infections are undergoing treatment at various hospitals in the state. A report from our Ranchi correspondent. Recovery rate from COVID-19 in Jharkhand is increasing every day. State Education Minister Jagannath Mehta, who underwent a bilateral lung transplant after severe lung infection caused by COVID-19, is also recovering. Experts who treated him at MGM Hospital Chennai at a media briefing in Ranchi have stated that lung transplant is also an option to many COVID survivors whose lungs suffered severe fibrosis, making them chronic respiratory patients. In the last 24 hours, 136 people have recovered while 67 new cases have been reported. The fifth day of COVID vaccination drive is being conducted today at 52 COVID vaccination centers across the state. Shilpi AIR News, Ranchi. The next round of talks between the central government and the farmer unions is scheduled to be held today in New Delhi. In the earlier 10th round of talks between the union government and 41 farmer unions, The government had proposed to the farmer unions that the implementation of farm laws should be kept on hold for a period of 1 to 1 and a half years. Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar had said that representatives of farmer unions and the government can discuss all the issues related to the farmers agitation so that an appropriate solution can be found. However, after the Samyukt Kisan Morcha meeting held yesterday, farmer unions had said that the farmers are still sticking to their demands and no proposal of the government will be considered until the government abolishes the farm laws. 
earlier, the Agriculture Minister reiterated that the farm laws are going to bring about a revolutionary change in the life of the farmers and in the agriculture sector. He said the government is committed to protecting the welfare of the farmers and no one can take the farmers' land away from them. नए कानून बनाना और कानूनों में बदलाव करना ये सारे जो प्रयत्न हैं इन प्रयत्नों का प्रतिफल साल दो साल में जब क्रियान्वयन के पश्चात धरती पर आएगा तो हमारा किसान भी सीना काम कर एक बड़े उद्योगपति की तरह खड़ा होगा और ये कह सकने में सक्षम होगा कि अगर उद्योग का जीडीपी में बड़ा योगदान है खेती और किसानी का भी है In West Bengal, opposition parties have urged the Election Commission of India to deploy central forces well in advance in the state to impart confidence among voters and to correct the erroneous voter list. Representatives of 10 recognized political parties met the full bench of the ECI who are on a visit to the state. After the meeting, West Bengal BJP President Dilip Ghosh told reporters that they have asked the commission to take necessary steps to make the poll process free. fair and peaceful he alleged that names of at least 5 lakh rohingyas have been included in the voter list which needs to be dropped left and congress leaders have expressed their concern regarding the voter list and asked the chief election commissioner to instruct the officials to rectify it meanwhile the eci is said to have expressed dissatisfaction regarding the law and order situation in the state sources said in the meeting with the adg law and order this morning the cec has clearly instructed to take all necessary measures to ensure free fair and peaceful election in bengal india has expressed shock at the unfortunate loss of lives of three indian fishermen and one sri lankan national following a collision between their vessel and a sri lankan naval craft external affairs ministry said india's strong protest in regard to this incident was conveyed by the indian high commissioner to the sri lankan foreign minister yesterday a strong demarche was also made to the sri lankan acting high commissioner in new delhi india emphasized the need to deal with issues pertaining to fishermen in a humanitarian manner new delhi said existing understandings between the two governments in this regard must be strictly observed and utmost efforts should be made to ensure that there is no such recurrence india has been among the first countries to establish diplomatic ties with the federal republic of germany after the second world war Bilateral relations between the two countries are founded on common democratic principles marked by a high degree of trust and mutual respect. In an exclusive interview with AIR News, Walter J. Linder, the German ambassador to India, shared his insights on India-Germany relations. He expressed strong support for India in its bid for a permanent seat in a reformed UN Security Council. United Nations it was formed in 1948 just right after the Second World War so the reality it reflects the situation in 1948 those were the victorious powers at the time but still in the security council there's no african country there is no latin american country there is no india so this is totally unacceptable a country with 1.4 billion people not being in the security council this is not possible mm-hmm. the membership of the security council is restricted to five permanent members we thought since the credibility of the united nations endangered if we don't reform it rapidly The complete interview can be heard in World News tonight on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 10:30 p.m. In the ongoing Ifri Yat Panji, many points about the finer components of movies are discussed in virtual sessions. One such aspect was cinema and music. We have more details from our correspondent. Bharat humko jaan se pyara hai. म्यूजिक माइस्ट्रो हरिहरन एक्सप्रेस हिज व्यूज ऑन म्यूजिक एंड मूवीज इन पोएटिक मैनर ही ओपिन दैट वेन देर इज अ मैरिज ऑफ सिनेमा एंड म्यूजिक ऑल सेंसेस आर अपील टू सिनेमा इन इंडिया इज हाईली इन्फ्लुएंस बाय थिएटर फील्ड विद म्यूजिक एंड डांस ही आइडेड दैट म्यूजिक इन कंटेम्पररी फिल्म हैज चेंज सो एज अ सोसाइटी कमेंटिंग ऑन द इवोल्यूशन ऑफ म्यूजिक इन इंडियन सिनेमा परकशन एक्सपर्ट विक्रम घोष सेट दैट वेन वी गेन इंडिपेंडेंस देर वॉज एन एक्सेंचुएशन ऑन बींग इंडियन इन द फिल्म ऑफ दैट इरा हेन्स द ऑडियो 
Indians was given a trajectory of Indian needs by means of Indian classical music. He added that region-based cinema gives the music directors a chance to portray a slice of that land. With Mukesh Thali, Tushar Jadav, for AR News, Panji, Goa. Shooting for film Bongo Bandhu, a biographical movie on Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, jointly produced by India and Bangladesh, began in Mumbai yesterday. The Mahurat was held at the Dada Sahib Phalke Chitra Nagri amidst all COVID-19 protocols. Veteran filmmaker Shyam Benegal is directing the biopic, being produced as part of the birth centenary celebrations of the father of the nation of Bangladesh. Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Zawadekar had mentioned about this film during the inauguration of the 51st International Film Festival of India as an example of close cooperation in the field of art and culture between India and Bangladesh. Incidentally, Bangladesh is also the country of focus at the IFI this year. The film is being produced under the Audio-Visual Co-Production Agreement between India and Bangladesh. The MOU for production of this film was signed on 14th of January last year between the National Film Development Corporation and the Bangladesh Film Development Corporation. And now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. Srinagar witnessed light snow. Temperatures will hover between minus 4 and 8 degrees Celsius. Jammu had mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. The minimum temperature was around 7 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 18 degrees. Leh will have an overcast sky. The minimum temperature was around minus 10 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 1 degree. Gilgit will have a generally cloudy sky. The temperatures will hover between minus 6 and 11 degrees Celsius. In Muzaffarabad, there will be thunderstorms with rain. The temperatures will hover between 4 and 16 degrees Celsius. Dehradun observed a minimum temperature of around 6 degrees Celsius and a maximum of around 21 degrees. Chandigarh had moderate fog. The temperature is likely to hover between 7 and 18 degrees Celsius. The national capital too is likely to have dense fog. The city temperature will hover between 7 and 23 degrees Celsius. In Hyderabad, the minimum temperature was around 17 degrees while the maximum will be around 32 degrees Celsius. Ahmedabad, the minimum temperature was around 13 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 31 degrees. And in Guwahati, fog or mist would occur and the minimum temperature was around 11 degrees, while the maximum will be around 25 degrees. And now an overview of today's newspapers. Most newspapers today carry varied news items on the vaccination front. Elected representatives above 50 years to get COVID jabs in next round, writes the statesman. PMCM's MPs MLAs to get COVID jab in second phase, writes the pioneer. Hiccups to be fixed, vaccine recipients may get time, place options, writes the Times of India. Five killed in Siram Institute fire, Covid shield production unaffected, informs the Indian Express. On day one, Biden plans Covid strategy, masks a must for travel, writes the Asian Age. In cricket, newspapers also take note of the return of the triumphant team India. The pioneer headline leads, red carpet welcome for Rahane. And finally, with the Sensex making a stunning comeback and investor wealth building up, doubling up, Sensex kisses 50,000 is the headline in the business standard. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address 18th convocation of Tejpur University in Assam this morning. Prime Minister to also interact with beneficiaries of COVID-19 vaccination drive in Varanasi. India crosses a significant milestone of vaccinating over 1 million healthcare workers. Myanmar, Mauritius and Seychelles to receive India-made Covishield vaccine. And next round of talks between centre and farmer unions to be held today in New Delhi. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.com and News on AIR app. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.